So not long ago, I made an activity table for my kids. It holds all their crayons and their notebooks and that sort of thing. So today I'm making a chair to go with that table. It's got the same look, the same feel, uh, it's made out of plywood, just like the table. And I've got plans for it. They're available over on the website. Uh, but here's the video. I hope you enjoy it. So I start out by cutting the plywood down into smaller, manageable pieces. Um, I've got a cut list uh, on my computer over on my workbench and I'm making trips back and forth looking at the cut list to cut out the individual parts and I've got several small pieces I've also got a couple of uh, legs that I've got to taper uh, but I do all of my cutting uh, here on the table saw and I'm cross cutting and ripping uh, all the wood and so after I get all that cut, I uh, go ahead and I, I do the, um, go ahead and drill the pocket holes. And the first step in this project is to assemble the, the shelf uh, up underneath the chair. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just, I'm getting everything um, drilled with pocket holes. I glue it all, assemble it. And then my next step is to uh, go ahead and put the legs on. Uh, but before I do that, I have to actually taper uh, the legs. And I knew back when I made the activity table that goes along with this chair, which is the reason for building this chair, that I was going to be tapering the legs. So I made a, a tapering jig out of uh, just scrap wood in the shop. And you can see that here. Uh, I've, I've got a, a downloadable plan, it's free, over on the website for this tapering jig. And I don't know if you caught that or not, but you could see one of the supports that's holding it down is cracked. So I've got to re uh, replace some of these um, pieces that are that holds the work piece down. Uh, and really that's the beauty of this thing. If something breaks, you just you know make another one. And so that was my whole idea with that. But I use the tapering jig to taper all of my legs and also the chair back is tapered uh, so you'll see that in a second but I attach the legs uh, make sure everything looks good and then I'll go ahead and attach the back legs uh, now the back legs and the chair upright for the seat the back of the seat is all one piece so I had to taper on both ends and it's at different measurements so I had to measure first then I had to taper and then I had to measure, make sure I had the uh, seat portion level. And when I had it just right, I went ahead and attached the back legs. And so now the next thing to do is to cut out the sections on the seat that will fit between those two back legs in the chair upright. And really I just put a couple of uh, uh, pocket screws in, toward the back. Uh, they're going to be hidden later in a, in a in the, in the next step uh, but all I really do is just glue the rest of it down and so I just clamp it until the glue dries and really that should be enough if I see that the chair is not holding up like it should or that it's coming loose I can just pop some brad nails in it and call it good and so on the back of this chair um, it's gonna be a uh, like a, a pocket for say coloring books, notebooks. Uh, my kids actually keep their iPads and those things. So uh, it's just a versatile little pocket on the back of the chair back. Uh, but one piece of that, I had to cut an angle at the bottom to get it to fit because of the chair back being angled. This piece had to be angled where it meets the seat. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just cutting uh, an angle on the bottom of that piece. And so that was a, a really simple, simple cut. And so once I get all this installed, um, it's, this, this was kind of tricky because I had to uh, hold it just right and use a clamp and make sure everything lined up properly. Uh, but once I got it clamped, uh, I always tell my students, you know, clamps are your friend, they hold things in place. So um, after I had all of it in place, I went ahead and I screwed it in. And so you can see the pocket holes there 
and so the last thing to do is just to add in the uh, what I call the headrest uh, basically it just gives it a nice look uh, it really serves no purpose except for just holding the two uprights at the top together and I had to use uh, I have a 90 degree screwdriver and so I had to use that in a couple of instances uh, where my drill wouldn't fit and that's something I didn't account for but it's a good thing I had that and so the last part of the project is just sanding everything down uh, getting all the burrs and splinters and all that good stuff off of it uh, sand down the plugs for the, the pocket holes uh, and there you have it I mean it's uh, a great little chair it's not too heavy it's uh, made well it doesn't tip back at all um, the kids love it you can see their iPads there in the back and it goes along with the table that I made not long ago uh, it's got the same look and feel and so it matches very good and I'm very pleased with the way it came out so if you guys are interested I've got plans over on the website at stoneandsons.net you can find the plans for the table and the chair and so uh, that's it I really appreciate you guys watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.